Hi, today I would like to talk about how you can uh, process uh, JSON and XML in your C Sharp program using dynamic objects. So let's get started. Uh, so first I'm going to start with the JSON. So I just have a console program and it's going to call this program, test program called JSON. And uh, first thing it does is it reads all the text from the sample JSON file and uh, to convert it and deserialize the string uh, I use a library called JSON convert and you can use it in uh, your NuGet packages it's called newtonsoft.json and it's a very good library so you should probably uh, experiment with that if you haven't already and uh, so you can call JSON convert deserialize object and since uh, I don't really know a priori as to what kind of data it is going to be so I don't have a class that is predefined that's the object of this uh, tutorial so I'm going to talk about how to do dynamic so I'm going to use the dynamic object and the dynamic is available in the class system dot dynamic so that's how you can get it so uh, basically I've read all the string and I get a dynamic object you can then loop over the dynamic object using the standard for each you can get the name and the value by just saying uh, something like this I don't need term value and here all what I want to do is I want to see if the name is programming and I want to add an extra value to it called Java so uh, basically uh, programming is just an array where it has list of uh, known uh, programming skills and I'm adding an extra skill here called Java so once I have modified my dynamic object here is my dynamic object uh, what I can do is uh, I can then serialize it back so I can say JSON convert serialize object and give it this new object and get a string and then I can write this string or as if uh, change the color of what I'm writing towards the end so we can see what is the change so that's uh, how you can uh, essentially read JSON modify that JSON and then write it back again if you want to and let me just show you the sample JSON so that's all it is and this is what I was going to try to modify so if you look at the programming it doesn't have J Java in it and I've just added that so let's just see if I run it what happens uh, just give it a minute this is a community edition of the Visual Studio so it seems to take a bit of it let's just see what happens so when I ran it through this was the input and if you look at the output it already has added to this array the Java so we have essentially mm -hmm. accomplished the JSON modification and writing back as we thought we could do that so that was one example so let me look at another example that I want to show you so instead of JSON we will do XML and something similar but with XML and let me just show you how that uh, would work uh, first uh, let me just show you the XML file so the XML file is pretty similar uh, I just added the programming as just uh, strings and you can see that it doesn't have Java in it first name last name books and all that so if I go into the programming portion and to demonstrate how it is being done uh, I use a class called X document and it's available in the link XML link so you can use that so it says document dot load and you can just load a sample file and then you can just use a sample link query to see from node in uh, descendants of test because everything in my sample.xml has to have a root element so that's the root element is test here it selects the node and uh, and then I just get something called nodes so I'm going to demonstrate the expando object or the dynamic so I just say dynamic expando object here I'm just uh, using the query to kind of loop through the elements and I'm assigning to my xml object a child dot name uh, key and it assigns the value a child dot value to access it as a dictionary you can just add this thing called as i dictionary string object so here all i'm doing is i'm checking child name to string is programming since we already had a string which has comma separated so this is all uh, essentially generating an array which is comma separated since this array is not big enough to add an extra element java so i have resized the array then i've added the java element and i'm i read i can write it back to my xml object uh this thing see here it is an object not just as a dictionary so if you look at this xml object dot program you can see it as an object and i uh, modified this and put it back in here 
Uh, this all it is doing is uh, taking my XML object see here as a dictionary and writing the new values back. So we have the new values also back. Here I can take an XML document and convert it into a string. So here is my string and then I can write it back to the console. So let me just uh, kind of uh, demonstrate uh, running this thing and I'm going to get it started. Alright, so I have paused this program now. So you can see that this XML object uh, has a dynamic view and it has all these dictionary elements. And I actually paused it so you can see it has a property called programming and I can access it right this way. So once we are done with it, uh, let me just kind of let it run through and you can see the end result. So it has run through and towards the end I can show you that it's writing the new values and here you can see it's got the comma separated values and added the new Java string. So this is all good. So uh, to recap uh, what I've shown you are two things. XML and JSON are the most popular formats to uh, interchange uh, data between uh, programs or through on the web and uh, you can essentially uh, use if uh, the dynamic object or the dynamic uh, way of doing things and processing you can take read the XML and write it back and modify it in between and same you can do for JSON if you want to learn this and more other you can go to my website and search uh, for Gaur Associates and thank you for watching this short screencast you have a great day